So hello, thank you for attending our talk, end-to-end -end OpenShift 4 clusters deployment automation in, open, in Amadeus IT context. So my name is Maria Alejandra Manueli. I'm an OpenShift Red Hat consultant working in the Ironman Amadeus project with my colleagues, Vanson Bronikowski and Tigo Castan. I will let them introduce themselves. Hello, so I'm Vincent Bronikowski, an OpenShift for the Red Hat consultant, and I work with Maria and Tibo on this project. Hello, my name is Thibaut Castan. I am a senior SRE working at Amadeus. I am specialized in cloud platform migration and operation, and I have been working with OpenShift and Kubernetes since uh, 2015. I have been working closely with the Red Hat team all along that project. So, uh, before digging into the project itself, uh, let's start by introducing Amadeus in a few words for those who don't know yet, uh, what Amadeus is doing. So, Amadeus is a global, is a technology company dedicated to the global travel industry. Uh, we're present in uh, almost 200 countries uh, with a worldwide team of more than 19,000 people. Our solutions help improve the business performance of travel agencies, corporations, airlines, airports, hotels, and more. So, why is this project? Uh, let's go back a few years ago to understand where Amadeus comes from with its cloud uh, journey. So, we started our cloud journey in uh, 2014, even before the very first version of OpenShift 3. At the same moment, we also started our partnership with uh, Red Hat, working closely with them on that topic. In the next few years, uh, we at, at Amadeus uh, gained quite a solid maturity in the use of OpenShift deploying and operating dozens of clusters, mostly in our private cloud at first. Those private uh, deployments uh, are part of an internal project called Ironman. Uh, Ironman because uh, its purpose is to provide a kind of a super yes and pass on-premise and for the long run. Uh, those deployments uh, are currently running on two Red Hat pro products. So OpenShift 3, we are currently uh, on 3.11, and uh, OpenStack. Uh, then, in parallel, we also started to extend our capacity in the public cloud, so both on Google and uh, Amazon. Uh, then, since uh, mid-2019, uh, we started deploying OpenShift 4 in the public cloud, so mostly in Azure. And we are quite impressed to see how the installation, the upgrade, and the overall management of the platform has been transformed, simplifying our operation model for both day one, but also for day two. As you all know, uh, the major event of uh, 2019 is a COVID-19 crisis. And uh, Amadeus being in the travel industry business, uh, we have been impacted. So we could not grow uh, our man private cloud as intended, which became uh, quite a blocker for Amadeus uh, migration to, to the cloud, uh, as there was still the need to uh, further uh, cloudify our operation model and uh, applications. So in uh, 2020, uh, the low use of our classic uh, infrastructure brought the opportunity of potential repurpose of uh, several hundreds of uh, servers to create a new YES cloud. And due to the usage of uh, older hardware, this stack has been called Ironman Lite. And the purpose of this Ironman Lite uh, project uh, was uh, to leverage existing Unus hardware and provide uh, new cloud platforms with a minimal cost and an excellent operational model thanks to uh, OpenShift 4, and this to continue Amadeus migration to the cloud. So let's talk about uh, Amadeus technical requirement for this project. So in Amadeus, we now have quite some experience deploying OpenShift 4 in the public cloud, mainly on Azure. But uh, deploying it on-premise was a completely different challenge. And that's why we requested the expertise of uh, Red Hat to help us on this task, as the core of this project was around two Red Hat products, OpenShift 4, so it was 4.6 at the time of the project, and uh, OpenStack 16. So we had some precise requirements. First, uh, we wanted a deployment model and operation of our private cloud as close as possible from the public one on Azure, and this was a single way for SRE teams to manage our cluster. Second point, uh, for our deployment on-premise, uh, we have no direct uh, internet access, so we needed a fully disconnected installation mode, where all the artifacts are fetched from internal repositories. 
we also wanted to use an API installation. So API stands for Installer Provision Infrastructure. And this to have the full cluster infrastructure provisioning self-managed by the OpenShift operators and thanks to uh, machine and machine set OpenShift uh, resources. This was uh, freeing us from the burden of managing ourselves the infrastructure and enabling easily great features like uh, cluster auto-scaling. Then, uh, first point, we wanted to use uh, uh, Calico as a SDN. Uh, as we use it a lot to enforce uh, proper network security in Amadeus, uh, we wanted to leverage a Calico feature like a global network set uh, to represent external cyber block or also global network policies. This to enforce some rules at a global uh, cluster level. And those features do not exist with other CNAs. Uh, finally, uh, the idea of this project was to be able to create a, a full cluster with like a single command consuming a single config file and in input. And this reusing some automation already built internally in, by Amadeus to deploy some uh, cluster on Azure. Uh, so we don't have to struggle to recreate clusters and have a kind of a cluster as a service model. Okay, I will now let uh, Vincent explain you more in detail about the project and the automation that has been built uh, based on those requirements from Amadeus. Thanks, Thibault. So the main thing we want to share with you in this talk is the experience of intercollaboration uh, with a client and the Red Hat in a consulting project. So we started this project uh, with a week of Navigate workshop. The Red Hat Navigate is a tried and test framework that helps our customers identify obstacles and align their business goals to deliver successful solutions. So the Navigate framework was delivered through a series of workshops which covered a set of consideration for OpenShift. And each day we had different workshops uh, that were talking about uh, different subjects. So the project was delivered by the Red Hat as the principal leader with a collaboration of Amadeus. And as a team, uh, Red Hat constantly worked as an autonomous team uh, within Amadeus. And the delivery was uh, has worked very well given the maturity of Amadeus in the OpenShift adoption journey. So I will talk a little bit to you about the implementation and delivery uh, of uh, the platform that Amadeus required. So based on the uh, prerequisite that Thibaut Castan uh, told us, so we deployed uh, on-premises cluster, which were on three ATSIT, so to uh, prevent crashes uh, if uh, some server uh, went down. It was the same thing for the all the storage, which were using Cinder in different ATSIT, so everything was well dispatched uh, on the infrastructure. And as a prerequisite, everything is being deployed with the IPI fashion. So you don't have to provision machines manually when scaling up the clusters. I will now talk a little bit about uh, the big challenges that we had during the implementation of this project. And the first one was the Calico integration. So it was a big challenge because basically the use case of having Calico as an SDN on OpenShift on OpenStack uh, as basically as basically not documentation, so we had to do a lot of work and researches to understand how this component could be working on this specific integration. We had to do a lot of back and forth and testing to in order to understand uh, how Calico worked and how to make it uh, viable with the needs of Amadeus. And uh, in addition to that, after having Calico well configured, we had to. Uh, configure and under, understand the Tiger operator, which was the component that basically deploys it automatically when creating clusters. So, uh, in short terms, the the thing that we had to do a lot was diving into the code of this component to understand what was happening to make it work and and make Amadeus happy about the Calico SDN. The next thing that we had as a challenge is having an OpenStack on-premise versus cloud provider solution. So. Since Amadeus wanted to have a, a, an excellent operational model, we it was kind of complex to start from simple deployment using uh, on-premise OpenStack and iterate through everything and all the prerequisites that uh, OpenStack can uh, can have. So, starting from the storage, from a network uh, configuration, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and how to deploy, for example, multi-edit cluster. So, this has kind of complicated to have. Uh, an on-premise environment that was working uh, as well as 
a cloud provider and for example even some really specific feature weren't working as intended and we have to do uh, exchange with the engineering teams to have everything fixed for the next releases of OpenShift on OpenStack. The last thing, the as challenge that we have seen as a big challenge was being reactive with all the Amadeus assets and needs. So uh, the integration were quite complicated and uh, with every, with the everything of that, we had then to integrate with the all the tools that Amadeus already possess. So since they are really mature, for example, they have a tool that is called the Amadeus wrapper that helps them to integrate manifest when creating clusters. So all the work we have done previously in cluster, we had to then integrate everything with the in the Amadeus manner with all the tools. And since Amadeus is really mature, when they had some questions or some needs, because this project was quite new, we had to come fast with a tailored solution that were quick and elegant so they can be happy and to make everything work properly. So I will let Maria talk a little bit now about the automation tool and the, technically speaking and how it has been implemented on the Amadeus side. Thanks. Thank you very much, Vincent. So while performing Navigate workshops, we do this exercise where we ask the client to identify business priority. We get them to vote on their top three, and then we go deep into the explanation of why these were chosen. So for Amadeus, the main business priority identified was operational excellence and then efficiency. So at the heart of this conversation, there was the topic of automation. We can see on the screen, the screen an extract of this exercise where automation was brought up several times. You could definitely see that this was at the organization's mind. Every talk of processes involved the question, can this be automated? This wasn't something new for Amadeus either. Uh, they had already advanced quite a lot on the automation topic, as Vincent and Tiva mentioned, there was the existence of what they called a wrapper, which leveraged the OpenShift installer to add a, to add manifest, like, for example, the Calico manifest, or day two operations during the install, as well as an automation tool based on Terraform to optimize the installation of OpenShift uh, clusters in Azure. So the easy adoption of Amadeus, uh, the easy adoption of automation by Amadeus made it so we could work side by side to create a process that allowed us to spun up clusters on one click. So um, automation became very quickly one of the top priorities of this project. So the OpenShift installation was automated from start to end. So how did we do with this? Let's dig a little deeper on the technical side. So the automation tool was based on two technologies, heat orchestration and Terraform. So first, let's talk about e-templates. So as mentioned, IES was deployed with OpenStack, and then OpenShift was installed on top of OpenStack to create a private cloud solution with infrastructure as a service and platform as a service capabilities. So e-templates describe the OpenStack infrastructure for a cloud application in a text file such as the one you see on the slide. This text file is leveraged to create a stack of infrastructure resources, such as networks, subnet, the Bastion server, and others. The high integration of e-template as an orchestration technology for OpenStack made it an obvious choice as a technology to use. This allowed us to deploy all the prereq OpenStack prerequisites to install OpenShift on top of OpenStack. So now that we know the Bastion server was automatically deployed by e-templates, you may be wondering how did we did to actually uh, configure the Bastion uh, server? So for this, we used Cloud Init. So Cloud Init is an industry standard that identifies the cloud is running on during boot, reads any provided metadata, and um, configures the system accordingly. So this allowed us to configure the Bastion server during boot time automatically. So the moment the Bastion server is signed up, repositories are configured. As uh, Tivo mentioned, it's a disconnected install, so we needed to configure the repositories, the internal repositories of Amadeus. Then packages are installed. The clients and the OpenShift installer, clients such as the OC client, OpenShift client, and Swift client are installed. Then the um, 
installation objects, such as configuration files, are downloaded, in this case from a Swift container. And finally, with the run command resource, CloudInit launches the cluster installation. So where does Terraform come in? So Terraform is the glue that brings all, to, all of this together. So to give it a little context, Terraform is an open source infrastructure as code tool that uh, includes an OpenStack provider, which allows us to create uh, OpenStack resources, such as, for example, leveraging e-templates to create an orchestration stack. The Terraform also includes an Azure provider, which is why it was used as a tool to create the automation for Azure clusters. So how is Terraform the, the glue? Well, we have three main things that we needed from this automation tool. So we needed to deploy the templates in a sequence. So for example, we need to deploy first the template with the project to install OpenShift, and then everything else that's deployed on the project. Then we needed to create installation objects and installation configuration, configuration files from different templates, and we needed the ability to variabilize uh, these files and these objects. So all of this was allowed by Terraform. So at the end, the automation looks something like the diagram you see on the screen. So if we go a little deeper on the diagram, the Terraform creates a st uh, orchestration stack, which is the one you see right, right now as stack tenant on the diagram, that deploys the project where OpenShift will be installed, sets up the user role assignments, configures the code test for this project. Then Terraform creates the floating IPs for the ingress and for the API, as well as the Swift container that will store the installation objects. The installation objects are created from a Terraform template and the floating IPs, cluster parameters, project names are added accordingly. And then finally, an orchestration stack, which is the one you see as stack server is created, which is uh, which deploys the OpenStack prerequisites, the Bastion server, and finally launches the OpenShift cluster. So as you can see here, the stack uh, deploys the networks, subnet, router, the floating IP for the server, the ports, and as well the cloud config resources that will configure the Bastion server. So this automation tool al allowed Amadeus to deploy clusters in a repeatable and a repeatable way and on demand serving as cluster as a service. So this already made this project really, really interesting. But in my opinion, there's something even less tangible than technology that made this project interesting. And it's the fact that this part of the project was looking to standardize processes within Amadeus. So this required to create a synergy between Red Hat and Amadeus. So while creating this tool, there was always the conversation where would this tool be compatible with what is already done or will be compatible with the existing infrastructure and workflows. So this goes along really well with the Red Hat principle of putting the client first and adapting what you do to your client's need. So now we'll go on to specify the benefits and wins of this project. Okay, so the, the first point, and I think it was maybe the main goal of this project, is that we are now able in Amadeus to provision a production-ready cluster using OpenShift 4 in our private cloud. And this allows us to move uh, traffic from our legacy infrastructure and support thousands of transactions per second on our, our, our new on-premise cloud platforms. Uh, the second point, and uh, it is also a consequence of the first item, uh, this project enables uh, Amadeus to continue its cloud migration. So first from the legacy infrastructure, but also from the existing uh, OpenShift 3 uh, platforms. And this uh, le leveraging all the great features of OpenShift 4 for the on-premise uh, deployment. So one of the main benefits, uh, benefits of this project as well is the automation of the OpenShift cluster, which allows to create clusters in a repeatable way using one single configuration file and on demand. Last but not least, the maintenance uh, of a good relationship with a client, which is Amadeus, which is a, a faithful and long time client. And it's cool, especially during these challenging times. Thank you everybody for attending our talk.
And I want to give a spe special uh, thank you to one of our colleagues, Thibaut de Marie, that worked with us along this project and the project would have, wouldn't have been possible without him. Now we'll be answering questions on the chat.